thank you for joining us tonight. You are now with me, Shel Shamina, for TVS Nightline. Let's get to the headlines. Now we begin with the flood situation update as the total number of flood victims in Sarawak from the third wave since Tuesday had decreased to 934 people. According to the State Disaster Management Committee, SDMC, the total number of temporary relief centres PPS still operating to had decreased to 14 compared to 18 early Saturday morning. Among the 14 relief centres, four were in Simunjan, one in Samarahan and nine in Surian, while PPS in Tatao district had been closed. Until now, Surian district, which is located around 60 kilometres from Kuching city, remains the most highly affected area with 701 victims from 233 families. The incessant heavy rain since a few days ago had caused the flood situation in Sarawak to continue until today. Right, as we anticipate this year's celebration, the standards operating procedure for the Chinese New Year celebration will need it to be fine-tuned. This is to avoid any misunderstanding among the Chinese community. Ada perkara-perkara yang tidak dilihat secara mendalam berkenaan dengan adat budaya masyarakat Cina apabila menyambut Tahun Baru Cina yang mana satu daripada budaya yang amat penting adalah uh, makan bersama-sama dalam satu keluarga. Dan perkara inilah yang saya rasa patut diperhaluskan kalau uh, MKN ataupun KKM di Semenanjung Malaysia hendak mengeluarkan kaedah-kaedah ataupun SOP perhaluskan sedikit supaya ia tidak mendatangkan perasaan kurang senang oleh masyarakat-masyarakat China. Earlier today, the Minister of Defence for Security Cluster, Datuk Seri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, announced that celebrations in West Malaysia and Sabah would be limited to family members from the same household. Meanwhile, house-to-house -house visits at districts and state travels were also not allowed. However, the Sarawak state government well announced its own SOP for a few regions in Sarawak, which is now under the Conditional Movement Control Order. Kerajaan Sarawak lebih prihatin tentang perkara ini dan uh, kita saya pun duduk dalam SDMC uh, kita berbincang perkara ini secara meluas uh, apa yang patut kita lakukan berapa jumlah dan sebagainya dan ekoran daripada itu kita mengeluarkan SOP SOP dan kaedah-kaedah tertentu uh, agar ia dah merangkumi uh, banyak perkara yang kita lihat untuk diperhaluskan sebelum kita membuat pengumuman itu. The Chinese New Year celebration will fall on February 12 this year and traditionally celebrated for 15 days. Meanwhile, Sunadin Member of Parliament Datuk Lee Kim Shin said his party would abide by the decision of the State Disaster Management Committee or SDMC Sarawak to not host any open house during the Chinese New Year 2021 celebration. SDMC in a statement said this year's celebration could only be held among family members. Lee, who is also Minister of Transport, also added that to avoid the spread of COVID-19, SDMC did not allow open houses and other activities. He said this at the press conference concerning the Chinese New Year 2021 celebration at the SUPP PSL Miri branch on Saturday. Hello there everyone and welcome back. Now on to the COVID-19 development as Sarawak recorded 185 new positive COVID-19 cases today. This brings the cumulative cases in the state to 5,457. According to the Sarawak State Disaster Management Committee, SDMC, Cebu tops the district list with the most new cases today at 101, followed by Lundu, 19, Song, 18, Dalat, 12, Subis, 7. Kanawi recorded six cases, followed by Bintulu, 4, Kapit, 4, Bau, 3, Kuching, 2, Sarato, 2, Miri, 1, Julau, 1, Maradong, 1, Belaga, 1, 
Matu 1, Kabong 1 and Lawas 1. On a positive note, 157 cases had recovered and discharged from hospitals today, where 72 were from Cebu Hospital, 60 Miri Hospital, 12 Bintulu Hospital, 10 Sarawak General Hospital and 3 Kapit Hospitals PKRCS. This brings the recovery rate in the state to 3,602 or 66.1% out of 5,457 cases to date. Meanwhile, Sarawak recorded 14 active COVID-19 clusters as of today. Meanwhile, Malaysia recorded 3,847 new COVID-19 cases today, bringing the cumulative total to 238,721 cases. The new cases today involve 3,843 local infections and four imported cases. There were 50,894 active cases with 305 patients being treated in intensive care units and 139 requiring respiratory assistance. Meanwhile, 12 deaths were recorded, bringing the death toll to 857. Selangor announced the highest number of cases with 1,481, followed by other states and federal territories that recorded three-digit infections, namely Johor 585, Kuala Lumpur 402, Malacca 329, and Sabah 233. Now, while awaiting for the COVID-19 test results, all the spaces in Long Laput longhouses had undergone sanitization. This included all the premises of the longhouses and also houses in the surrounding area. According to the Chief of Marudi Fire and Rescue Department, Maureen Sim, the operation covered 116 rooms in four blocks of the longhouses, an Ikase house, a canteen and Meringau amongst house. A total of five personnel from Marudi Fire Station had conducted the sanitization by using four units of spray tanks and sodium hypochlorite solution. <laughs> Kampung Long Laput untuk menjalankan operasi sanitasi awam di kampung pula. Di mana di kampung uh, ada beberapa anilah PUI, lah PUI masih PUI masih dalam tunggu result untuk COVID. Tapi belum pastilah apa dia punya mungkin harap harap dia negatif. Tapi uh, penduduk kampung dia rasa gelisah dan gisalah dengan uh, apa tu dengan dia punya Ah, dengan situasi yang berlaku, berlaku uh, masalah, berlaku masalah. Sebab semua kuatir yang seperti yang kita tahu semua kuatir tentang COVID, sebut COVID semua orang takut. Following the next update, as the Ministry of Health or MOH needs 12 million low-debt volume strangers to vaccinate 20% of the country's population or 6 million people under the first phase of the national COVID-19 immunization program beginning at the end of this month. Its minister, Datuk Sri Dr. Adam Baba, said the syringe type was needed as the vaccine for the immunization program has to be administered with a specific dosage to the recipients to ensure its effectiveness. Low date volume syringes generally refers to zero waste syringes to ensure that patients receive the whole vaccine dosage provided. Commenting further, Dr. Adam said the supply of syringes was expected to be received before the COVID-19 vaccination program commences and will be implemented from time to time. Under the first phase of the vaccination program, he said each individual would be given two shots with the second shot to be given 21 days after the first one to ensure effectiveness of the vaccine. Following the next news, as the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, MOTAC, is working with the Department of Labour Peninsula, Malaysia, to implement the initiative to temporarily place workers in hotels in accordance with the Workers' Minimum Standards of Housing and Amenities Act 1990. 
Motec in a statement today said the decision was reached during a special session of the National Security Council on COVID-19 management. The government's proactive efforts were aimed at tackling the spread of COVID-19 pandemic caused by workplace clusters, especially those involving workers' accommodation. The ministry said the scope only involved room accommodation, not including the cost of water, electricity, laundry and other facilities. However, employers could get the other facilities related to the additional costs by negotiating with the hotels on the matter. Meanwhile, the Tourism, Arts and Culture Ministry, or MOTEC, had identified several Asia-Pacific countries, namely Brunei, Singapore, Thailand, Japan, as well as South Korea, Australia and New Zealand, where the opportunities for the creation of travel bubble arrangements could be explored. Furthermore, its minister, Dr. Sri Nancy Shukri, had held discussions with the Health, Home Affairs and Foreign Affairs Ministries to review its potential. The countries listed were considered safe by the World Health Organization. Apart from that, she said, as the chairman of the Regional Commission for the East Asia and the Pacific on the Global Tourism Crisis Committee, United Nations World Tourism Organization, Malaysia had also voiced the need for transparency and standardization of standard operating procedures across borders by safe countries to facilitate travel by taking into account the views of the health agencies of the countries concerned. And the discussion to allow sectors to operate during the Movement Control Order, or MCO 2.0, is being held with the National Security Council, or NSC. According to the Minister of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs, Dr. Sri Alexander Nanta Lingi, KPD and HEP wishes that most businesses sector that were closed to operate as soon as possible, provided that all conditions were fulfilled by various parties to adhere strictly to the stipulated standard operating procedure during the movement control order. Among the business sector that are not allowed to operate are clothes shop, sports goods, household and kitchen utilities and cosmetic retails. A new e-learning hub called Illate was launched by the Human Resources Development Fund or HRDF. Uh, it is as part of its effort to assist Malaysians during this difficult period of combating COVID-19 to enable the people to prepare for the future by assessing hundreds of skill development and educational-based content. A collaborative effort between HRDF and GO1, one of the largest international e-learning aggregators, HRDF said the e-lative will be available to all Malaysians starting from February 6, 2021 until February 5, 2022. All Malaysians, especially job seekers, were encouraged to assess the free online training courses at Ilate official website. Through this collaboration, the Ilate would benefit Malaysians with free access to more than 200 industry-driven training courses customized to the needs of the Malaysian industry. As these courses are provided by an international non-profit aggregator, the courses for now are in English. Human Resources Minister Datuk Seri M. Saravanan said this initiative was crafted to encourage Malaysians to adopt learning and knowledge acquisition as part of their everyday routine. Meanwhile, HRDF Chief Executive Datuk Shahul Hamid said although HRDF was first set up to service its levy-paying stakeholders, the Ilate platform was HRDF's way of giving back to all Malaysians. Back to the nightline on the crime development as the police seized smuggled cigarettes from a sundry shop located at Taman Sri Sarawak, Jalan Bukit Mata, Kuching, around 9.40pm last night. Kuching Central Police Station Chief ASP Ahmad Abang in a statement today said a worker of the premise, a 32-year-old Indonesian man, was also arrested. According to Ahmad, initially his team was out to conduct their investigation and surveillance on illegal gambling activities. Instead, they stumbled upon these illicit cigarettes. 
He added that the suspect also failed to produce the relevant documents from the customs department regarding the cigarettes that were found hidden underneath shelves inside the shop. The cigarettes comprising of different brands, he said, was estimated to be worth 7,590 ringgit. The case is currently being investigated under Section 135 Bracket 1 Bracket D of the Customs Act 1967. The insabi vegetable is well known in Sarawak, especially among the Daya community. It tastes a bit bitter and when it is pickled, many people say it tastes like kimchi. Let's hear more about it. Sabi vegetable has the potential to be commercialized and provide a lucrative income. According to the chairman of Permanent Food Production Park, TKPM, Kuple Nipa Aji, the demand for insabi is high, especially in Kuching. Tidak heran kalau kita dapat kalau satu bulan ke kedang ini senang. Ia mat satu ribu ringgit, dua ribu ringgit terpulang kepada anda. Kalau terutama kawasan greenhouse, dipanggil sistem pelungu jangan tidak masalah. Kamu tanam, okay, boleh tinggal ke sana. Cuma yang tegas tadi, buang rumput saya. Itu yang perlu jual. Furthermore, the surplus of ensabi vegetables can be preserved or pickled. And the demand for the vegetable is high in local market. Untuk ini, daripada keluar dari pelal dang, biasanya saya keluarkan 1 kilo 6 ringgit. Pel, bila sudah dijeruk ataupun dikasam, okay, 350 gram mencecah 6 ringgit. Maksudnya kalau 1 kilo, masuk lebih daripada 15 ringgit. For vegetable seller Galin Rinkus, the demand for ensabi is high. However, the supply is insufficient. This shows that local farmers have the opportunity to try ensabi farming on a commercial basis. At the same time, this could increase their income. Jadi permintaan tu nang mayu, nang laban musim hujan tu musim landas tu nang nanti bersih utai berkenya. Permintaan memang tinggi lah, so kami harap uh, kepada petani semua uh, tolong bolehlah bekalkan lebih banyak lagi lah untuk kami orang digalak untuk tanam lebih banyak lagi lah. Jika sayur miring boleh memasuki pasaran ke Singapura, kimchi terkena di restoran termuka dunia. Mengapa tidak ensabi boleh memasuki pasaran antarabangsa? Saya Setiodawi bersama dengan juru kamera Nasrullah Unto melaporkan untuk TBS. Meanwhile, the demand for tampang boat services had decreased following the COVID-19 pandemic. This decrease had affected the tampang boat operators in Kampung Boyan, Kuching, since a year ago. Kadang tentu, orang di antar. Bukan yang banyak, seorang, dua orang, seorang, dua orang, ya, ya. Enjin besar. No ada kita lah. Wang kami lah kami orang makai situng. Tu wang ikit makai banyak. Kita orang orang sedikit lah. Seorang kan tahu. Besar lah. Lain lah kita nak makai enjin pam lah. Nampi sepuluh ringgit sampai tiga kali tiga hari. For Wahad, although it is difficult to get passengers, the SOP compliance continues to be prioritised with limited passengers per trip. Yang selalu saya dah jarang ambil sepuluh. Habis tinggi pun enam orang. Sebab mikir abang lah. Haa, ya ni. Covid abang lah. Ya ni kita berfikir orang tu, kan tu sakit orang. Perkhidmatan perahu tambang sememangnya satu tarikan ikonik di Bandar Raya Kuching. Namun kini mereka berhadapan dengan masalah kekurangan penumpang akibat pandemik COVID-19. Laporan Lukman Muhammad bersama juru kamera Nasrullah untuk TVS Kuching. On to our local sports update as Sarawak Esports Association or SESA sought permission from the National Sports Council MSN to acquire new talents to represent Sarawak in the Sukma 2022. According to its president Afik Narawi, the requirement is needed as esports players have other commitments apart from their age factor. Uh, jadi kita kita tunggu keputusan daripada Mesyuarat Dewan Kuasa Khas Sukma 2022. Dan hmm. lepas yang baru kita boleh apa nama uh, buat tindakan lah atau sama ada kita boleh cari pakat baru ataupun uh, di sebaliknya lah. According to Afik, new games also encourage SESA to find new and skilled talents. He added if given green light, SESA will be ready with the vision of the next athlete to be included into the full list of the eSports squad. 
Wrapping up the nightline tonight, as Sarawak United FC seems stronger in the Premier League competition this season when it successfully acquired the former striker of Malacca United, Uche Agba. The matter was confirmed by the technical director of Sarawak, B. Satyanathan. Jadi top scorer dekat Melaka, top scorer dekat polis, top scorer kan. So, Ella dah biasa dengan dia. So, itulah dia ada latar belakang yang bagus. Dekat Bahari pun dia top scorer. He revealed that Sarawak United FC, which should have undergone training in Peninsular Malaysia, will return to Sarawak following the enforcement of the movement control order. Uh, itu yang diumumkan oleh Presiden kita Datuk Posa. Uh, kerana situ tak uh, kita tak tahu. Uh, sebelum ni dikatakan Februari 4, lepas tu sekarang dah dah bertambah lagi. Kita pun tak tahu. Kita tak boleh buat latihan secara kumpulan ya. So lebih baik kita datang ke Kuching lah. And that concludes TVS Nightline for tonight. As always, thank you for tuning in to your local news tonight. Here with me, Shao Shamina, and I'll see you next time and have a good weekend.